Hello Hair Tools users, I am going to do a quick demonstration uh, slash tutorial on the new geometry node hair system in Hair Tools and using custom collections of hair cards. So as you can see uh, under the profile settings really quickly just to show you where it's located under profile you can choose mesh profile you can use either choose one card or you can choose a collection of cards so you can make multiple different types of hair clumps out of cards and put them into a collection and i have them under collection number one so i have these three different hair cards uh under collection oops under collection under collection one which i then chose here so then it's going to randomly um it's going to put those cards in there and then randomly spawn them basically all over the, the head as hair and you can have the width and then you can change the seed um, just to change like the randomization so that's um, basically what I'm going to be showing you how to make the cards at least how I make my hair cards so um, that's what I'm going to be showing you here today so I opened up a new uh, new scene here and I'm just going to kind of show you how I do this so basically and it's super simple um, I basically just create a plane I bring it into my scene I can go find it I'm going to go here I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then I'm going to scale it on the oops on the y-axis so I can make like an actual hair card here so we'll say that's my hair card and first I'm gonna go to edit mode I'm gonna add some loop cuts oops and then I'm going to bring in a texture Shift A, we're going to load in a reference image. I'm going to choose my uh, opacity map. There we go. I have to make sure extras are enabled in order to see it. We're going to kind of make this a similar size. Click on your hair card. We're going to change the visibility to wire. There we go. Now we can line it up to our hair card. And what you can do is you can literally just do this and then you have your, um, it can just be, um, well, I'll show you <laughs> kind of to explain what I like to do is I like to have like a similar size so that you have room and it doesn't, there's not as much intersecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my plane here. I'm going to start lining this up with my texture. that's probably good and then what you can do is you can if you want to do which I can probably just run through this really fast um, can duplicate this oh I think I got my okay I can go ahead and hide this and now you have your yeah. so now I got my my uh, cards here so now I need to UV them Oops. so if I go into UV editing I'm gonna start with this one or edit mode and I'm gonna go UV projection from view I think that's the best way to do it if anyone else has any other ideas and I believe resize this to about right okay so that's that one let me just do the same thing with the rest okay so now we can go into our shaded oh, we are in shaded so now what I can do is add the hair texture or the hair material which you would then um, create that in the baking scene or whatever other program you use but I definitely recommend the baking scene um, there are definitely tutorials on that but you can uh, load up your material I just have one called hair I believe it's hair yep and I'm just gonna load that up onto all these so now if we look at it we got our hair 
So now you have your hair cards, which we're going to go ahead and put into a collection. Now the fun part is actually creating those clumps of like custom hair card clumps, <laughs> meshes that you can use, so your custom meshes. You don't have to, you can just use cards individually if you want, but doing it the, this custom way is actually extremely um, handy and I feel like it makes the hair look a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out my clumps. Um, I'm actually going to go with, I'll take this guy here and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make copies. I don't want to, I want to keep these here as my, my originals and then I'm going to make copies. So I'm going to make a copy of this one and I'm going to move it over here. And this might be easier if I turn on wireframe. So I have that guy over there and I'm going to make a copy of this guy and move him over here on top of it, but I'm going to rotate it. Oh, that's because I did it 180, 90 degrees. Sorry. So we got that. So now if we go back into shaded mode, we can see that. But if we want to even go further, like I like to do, I'm going to create, I'm going to copy, copy it again. Bring it over here again. It's not lighting up. I'm going to make another and then I'm going to copy it again, move it over here. So now I kind of have a cool looking little clump there. So if we look at it, shaded mode, here, let's see if we can get rid of that wireframe. Okay, so now if we look around the mesh, you can see from each side, it looks full versus like uh, these other ones, they disappear <laughs> if you try to look at it. There, it doesn't even exist anymore. So that's one thing about these clumps that are really cool. It's like from each side, it has volume and you can kind of customize it the way you want. I used a lot of the smaller or the less transparent ones and put like a little bit more one in the middle. So, I mean, it really just depends on what you're going for, but this is just an example. So this is my clump. So now we need to combine all these into one. So now I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to do control J to join them all. And I'm going to rename it clump one. All right. So now what I did is I brought my custom hair cards over into the demo scene that uh, you can download. So this is the demo head and these are my hair cards. They're not on the demo head right now. This is just the default hair tools, hair material. I have not done anything yet except bring my cards over. So just bring in your custom uh, clumps of hair cards and make sure they're in a collection. So I got this collection number two, which I can name my cards, you can name them whatever you want. And now I'm going to click on his hair and make sure it's the hair curves here. And then I'm going to go down to profile. I'm going to change this to mesh profile and I'm going to choose my, oh, I mean my collection, use collection and then choose your collection, which is my cards. Now, obviously you're going to want to change the width. So 0.01 actually looks pretty decent. We can maybe go 0.20. I mean, 0.02 might be too thick, but, uh, oh, and then you have to change the material. So I have to change the material to the hair because that's what's on these. Make sure you, whatever material is on, I don't know why it says there's two of them there whatever material is on, on your hair cards, make sure you put it over here as well. And, or make sure it's on, or listed here under your hair. And I think I can make that smaller, 0 0.01. There we go, that looks better. And then you can change the seat around, which then kind of wrote, it's randomly um, puts these two different cards, but if you had more cards, obviously there'd be more of a difference and notice, you'd be able to notice it more. And I mean, that's pretty much all what I got there. So, I mean, now you have your custom hair cards. I 
And I think it actually rotated them. It's kind of hard to tell because I didn't. Yeah, it did. It rotated them. So whatever you do to these is going to do it. It's going to happen to your hair over here. Which you can use um, the nodes to really add any anything like that if you really want to. I, that's pretty much it. And then if you want to, once you want to convert your hair uh, to mesh, it's pretty simple. You basically just go down. I'm actually going <clears> to <throat> full copy this so I don't lose it in case something happens gonna go down to hair operations first you have to convert the hair system or transfer the hair system and now you can hide the other one and now you can take the hair curves right here and then now you would convert hair to mesh and then you hide that one I mean you hide all right now this this should be the mesh we'll find out when we go into edit mode select everything and go into UV editing and there we have it there is find my it has <clears throat> it uh it's UV and everything so you can transfer this to a program of your choice all right well this is the final result brought into character creator a uh, four uh, I applied the material that I had applied in blender uh, I had a smart material. There is no scalp, so you can kind of see the original head scalp. I just brought in this, the head just because the hair fit right on it. So I, it was just a good demonstration for being, you know, a quick test. And I honestly think the hair is actually in the, going in the wrong direction. I think the roots are the tips and the tips are the roots. It still looks okay, but I kind of figured that out when applying soft cloth, which the roots decided to just go away, for, you know, went in the opposite direction. But anyway... Uh, I'm going to kind of show you a few tr tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that you'll run into, but I just thought I'd show you kind of like the final render here with some hair, different hair coloring applied using all the different maps for character creator. Um, and it's not, it's not too bad. Unfortunately, the poly count is extremely high. I have to figure out why the simplifying is not working. I still have not figured that out. Um, so I will try to figure something out. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, I am going to show you some tips and tricks now. Okay, so one thing that happened to me when I first started doing this is I noticed that the hair was going in the wrong direction, like it was sideways, and then when I tried to make it longer, it was like just all, just doing some really crazy stuff. So basically in order to fix that, you have to go into edit mode, click on your hair card, and you have to kind of just play with the rotation of the hair card until you end up getting it going in the right direction. And uh, in order to make it easier to see, I would maybe recommend applying... Um, Viewport, visibi viewport visibility, uh, the, t the wireframe, because that's really going to tell you if it's going in the right direction or not. Uh, oops. So then if you go back into your card, select all. So if we rotate it, and if it's going in the wrong direction, you'll be able to see that it, you can tell right away by looking at it. So yeah, make it wireframe and then play with the rotation. The tip is here. Okay, so now I have to go back into edit or object mode and then flip it again. Okay, so this is the bottom. This is the root. And that's okay, so now we can tell that the right it's moving in the right direction. It was just because <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. But that's basically one thing that you'll find out is if it's just not cooperating right, you have to rotate in edit mode and then move it back into object mode, and then that's kind of how you'll get it going in the right direction. So I think that's pretty much what I have for tips and tricks. I haven't really messed around with the, all the different settings in here. I, I don't really know much about geometry nodes, and getting this all set up is a little bit daunting for me. So um, this is all I got, and once I learn more, I will probably post some more videos.